Do you struggle with refreshing and getting your curls to look nice on next day hair? Well, I'm going to be answering all of your most asked questions about refreshing and really help you problem solve to figure out why your hair doesn't hold up on wash day or why it doesn't look great after you refresh. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things for beginners. I love problem solving with curls and talking about the science of hair. So this video is going to be part of the talk through Q&A series that I'm doing here on my channel where I answer your questions while I'm doing my hair. I've already done one all about curl definition, so the link for that video will be down below. So let's go ahead and get started with the refresh routine and I'll answer all of your most asked questions about refreshing. So before I start the refresh routine, let's first talk about the key to having an easier, more successful refresh, and that is protecting your curls at night. If you're not doing much to preserve your curls overnight, then it's just gonna cause much more work for you the next morning and you have to do a lot more refreshing. My personal favorite way of protecting my curls at night is a satin or silk bonnet. This is a satin bonnet that I got from Amazon. It comes in a pack of four and I specifically like these because they have a comfortable band. It just has this stretchy band. It's not like that thick band that can be uncomfortable. It can also mash your roots around the hairline. So this one's nice, it comes in a multi-pack, so once they start to stretch out a little bit, then you can just grab another one. So I've been through, I think, two of these so far in that pack. Really like these because the size fits perfectly on my head and my hair type. I also sleep on a satin pillowcase, which is behind me here. That's pretty much just a backup, and I like the way it feels. It's very cooling and better for the skin, but it actually helps protect your curls from frizz because a regular cotton pillowcase causes so much friction and tangles in the hair, it can cause your hair to mat up and causes a lot more frizz. So the first question is nighttime protection and protective style. So as I mentioned, Wearing a bonnet is the best in my opinion because it keeps your curls up off of your neck. It doesn't fall off on me. If you get one that fits you right, it won't fall off. Whereas the pineapple, putting my hair up because it is so short, sometimes it falls down and it doesn't stay throughout the night. So this is my favorite way. Some people like just wearing their hair up in a pineapple, which is just where you put your hair up on top of your head right here, but that just stretches out the roots for me at least. And then I have to do more refreshing to get the curls to come back. Another thing that some people like to use is a buff. I don't have one, but it basically looks like a scarf or a bonnet, it's almost like a tube to where the ends are out but your hair is still up on top of your head. Some people also like using a satin or silk scarf. I have a scarf that I like to wear when I'm out in the sun or out in the humidity to protect my curls because it looks a lot cuter than wearing like a bonnet um, because it's more of like a stylish way of protecting your curls. One of the other questions was where can I get satin or silk scarves from? I would recommend checking Amazon. I haven't personally bought any of them from Amazon just because I only have one that I got from Curlsmith. So one of the questions was in a bonnet, my hair still gets messed up overnight and needs refreshing. Why is it too big? So I always say that finding the right fitting bonnet is like finding the right fitting bra. It can be so hard. Definitely takes trial and error to find one that's right for your hair type. So if you've tried a bonnet and it didn't work for you, then it probably was not the right size. And it's really hard when you're shopping online too because you definitely cannot tell what size it is. It's really hard even with measurements. But I would recommend just ordering some, seeing if you can kind of go off of the measurements and then you might have to return and reorder, which I've had to do a ton of times before I settled on these, which fit my hair perfectly. So if you have a similar length and density to me, then this pack from Amazon will probably work well for you. But if your hair is falling down in your bonnet and it's not staying up on top of your head, then it's definitely too big. And that's not really doing anything to protect your curls other than preventing friction against your pillowcase, it's not keeping your curls plopped on top of your head because if your curls are plopped up on top of your head, then they're going to stay more defined because they're kind of like scrunched against your head. Whereas if they're falling down, they're just getting like mushed and stretched out and stuff. On the other hand, if your curls are getting smushed against your head, then it could be too tight. So if you're taking your bonnet down and your curls are completely stuck against your head and they've gotten messed up, then it could be too tight. Or if it's uncomfortable for you to wear, then it's too tight. A lot of times though, I find bonnets are just too big for people, especially if you have low density hair like mine, or if you have very short hair and they're falling off throughout the night. If it's falling off though, it might not be the right band size, which is another thing that you want to um, look at when ordering. So this pack, I finally found one that worked for me after going through so many of them. You also may not be putting the bonnet on right. I've done a whole video all about how to properly put on a bonnet and I recommend checking that out because my method makes it to where your curls are plopped on top of your head versus getting smushed and misshaped because if you're not putting it on right, 
they could definitely get bent and misshaped to where they look wonky the next morning. The next question is how to prolong your wash days, especially during early days of curly hair journey. So when I first started transitioning, I definitely couldn't go as long in between washes. It's normal to have to refresh your hair a lot more. I had to refresh every single day if I wanted it to look good. And that's just because your hair is more damaged, it's more frizzy, it's probably higher porosity, which doesn't tend to hold on to moisture very easily. So it can get very dry on next day hair. Um, so as your hair improves and your porosity returns back to a normal level, then it will get better. It just takes a lot of time. I had to do so much refreshing in the beginning and it was also very tangly all the time because it was damaged. So get a haircut that can make the world of a difference and also just be patient with it. All right, so let's go ahead and go get into the actual refreshing routine and I'll answer lots more questions and address your concerns about refreshing. So now I'm ready to refresh. My curls are actually not looking too bad. So I washed on Wednesday, today is Friday. Um, and a lot of it is due to the products that I use. So I personally like using Curlsmith products. Um, these are the ones that I was using on wash day. So I usually refresh with the same products just so I don't cause my curls to get weighed down or I don't have any product interactions that don't mix well. It's just so much easier just to use the exact same products. Um, I did use the Weightless Air Dry Cream and the Curl Defining Styling Souffle. I've been testing out different combos for an upcoming video that I'm doing where I'm comparing the different Curl Smith creams. So that's what I was doing here, but I'm just gonna use the same products, but the products make a big difference because if you're using products that cause a lot of buildup, then your curls might not look as good on next day hair. And if they don't have strong enough hold, they also won't hold up either. So a lot of the questions that I saw were around how to get your curls to last longer than just a few hours. And that's all about having good products that have a strong hold and also products that help your hair retain moisture. Using products with film forming humectants will help your curls retain moisture and is also really great if you live in a very dry climate or if you have low porosity hair. Both of those characteristics tend to lead to a lot of dehydration and moisture loss from your hair. So that is why I really like the souffle from Curlsmith because it is loaded with film forming humectants. It has Irish moss in it, it has aloe, and it also has flaxseed, all of which are film forming humectants. So the next question is, I'm not understanding how curly girls can go so long without washing their hair. My hair comes out great on day one and by day two, I'm already needing to refresh. What am I doing wrong? So you're not doing anything wrong. That's totally normal. Almost all of us do have to refresh unless if you just magically had an amazing long lasting wash day and you don't refresh or if you just don't care about the frizz. Some people don't refresh, but most of us do have to refresh if we want our curls to last all week and if we want them to hold up and look nice on next day hair. So you're not doing anything wrong, that's totally normal. Um, but a lot of it does have to do with the products. Like I mentioned, if you don't have good products that don't hold up very long, or if you're um, using products that build up a lot, then that can just cause it to look bad on next day hair. So I don't get any buildup from the Curlsmith products. That's why I love using them whenever I want a very long lasting wash day because they rinse out very easily with just water. So the first thing I'm going to do is wet down my hair. I don't like to completely soak and saturate my hair because that will just cause all of the curls to fall out and I'll have to do a lot more work and it will take longer to dry. And the key is to keep refreshing easy and not have to completely restyle Unless if you're like really pushing in, it's day four or five and you're in need of a wash and just gotta go one more day. I've definitely done those full refresh routines. I have a full video all about how to do a full refresh, but today we're going to do like a medium level refresh where it's not just touch-ups, but it's also not a complete restyle. So a lot of people like to use a spray bottle to wet down their hair. I definitely like doing this when I have to fully refresh, but sometimes it's easier just for me to use my hands with some water under the tap. So I'm just gonna wet my hands and go over the surface of my hair. So the question was, I don't know how much water to use. So that's really going to depend on how messed up your curls are and how much you need to refresh. As I mentioned, my curls aren't looking too bad. I don't need to completely reshape my curls. As you can see, they still have pretty good definition. So if I add too much water, I'm going to have to completely reshape my curls. So that's going to cause them to fall right back out because you know how water resets our curl pattern straightens it back out and then when it dries, it curls back up. So the more water that you add, the longer it's gonna take to dry and the more refreshing that you're gonna have to do to get those ringlets to come back. So that's how I kind of judge how much water to add. So you see how some of these are completely stretched out. I am gonna show you how you can redefine some of those stretched out curls. So right now I'm just kind of going around the surface of my hair and smoothing and removing a loose hair. So this is what I like to do to prevent completely ruining my curl pattern is I just smooth over it with my palms 
and that way I'm removing the loose hairs that are trapped, sort of lightly detangling without fully detangling my hair. And if you have a lot of frizz on the inside layers, like if you notice a lot of frizz poking through, then I recommend sectioning your hair lightly and make sure you're refreshing it down at the lower levels. So right now I'm just smoothing some water in. And because these Curlsmith products have a lot of slip and they also can be reactivated with water, once I'm adding water, I'm getting some of that slip back so I can almost detangle with just water, which is nice. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add a little bit of the weightless air dry cream to my palms to help me detangle, but I don't wanna use too much product. So one of the questions was, why does my hair seem to get more greasy looking after refreshing? And that is probably due to the products and you might be adding too much. I just used like probably a pea size amount and I mixed it with water. So you can see I added water, emulsified it in my hand. So I have like this milky, creamy, watered down consistency. So by watering down and diluting your products, you're not gonna be adding too much, which can just cause your hair to get weighed down and very sticky on next day hair. So I'm adding as little product as possible. Another trick that I like to do is I skip refreshing on day two usually if I don't really need it to look perfect or if I'm not going anywhere. I won't add any product on day two, that way I'm not layering on too much each day. You want to keep it as minimal as possible when it comes to layering product on, especially if your hair gets weighed down easily. And if you saw the last video that I did, which was the twist review where I showed you actually my hair every single day throughout the week and how I refreshed. A lot of the days I would just use water to refresh. And you can do that if you're using a gel that can easily be reactivated with water. Not all products can do that, but I personally like to find a gel that the cast will reform just by adding water and letting it dry. So I almost forgot the scalp refresh. I am gonna apply some in this Curlsmith Scalp Stimulating Booster. I've been using the Curlsmith Hair Growth products. So this is what I have to do in the morning. And this is actually a really good product to refresh your roots like after a workout. I saw a lot of questions about that. Um, and this I like because it kind of foams up a little bit. It's like a root refreshing foam, but it feels super nice on the hair. And this strangely has prevented my hair from getting buildup on my roots. I don't know what it is about this product, but it's supposed to keep your scalp like in the optimal condition for hair growth. And I've also noticed that it's preventing buildup. So I used to always get like that sebum buildup where it would be under my nails like if I scratched my scalp. I don't have this at all anymore. And I don't know if it's from this product or maybe just because I'm not using products that cause buildup, I don't know. But I don't get any oil buildup and I don't get product buildup really anymore since I've been using this. So this is another great way to refresh the roots if you want to get more root volume is apply a root refreshing product or even just some water. You can spray some water at your roots because Anytime that you're wetting your hair, you're able to kind of reset it. And so that way you can then take your diffuser and diffuse your roots to get that root volume back because usually when you're refreshing, your roots are dry and you need them to be a little bit wet to be able to reset them and get that root lift again with your diffuser. This is another product I just got and I haven't tried it out yet. This is from Bouclem. I think that's how you say it. It's a French brand. Um, this is their root refresh spray. I'm not sure if I should spray it though because I already used the Curlsmith one. But let's try it on some areas that don't feel too wet. But if you really struggle with your curls getting weighed down at the root and flat roots, I saw a lot of questions about that. I would avoid applying too much product at your roots unless if you find one that really helps with root volume because the more that you apply, it can just get sticky and weighed down at the roots. I really like to keep my roots as clean as possible, so I'll have to test this more to see how it does. This could maybe be a good product though to just spritz like at your root and then use your diffuser to get some more lift right there versus just using plain water. And now I'm going to add more of the souffle, which is the gel that I use. So again with this, I like to dilute it with water. So I'm gonna make sure my hands are good and wet. And then I'm gonna pick up as little product as possible. That's like a pea size amount, which a little goes a long way with the souffle anyways. You wanna definitely make sure you emulsify this product. So now I have like a slimy, slippery gel water consistency, which is super nice for refreshing. So all I'm gonna do is pick up some ringlets that are looking frizzy, smooth over them. If I need to detangle, I will actually place my fingers within the curls and smooth to so see how it's like clumping them back together like that. So I'm just gonna go around, pick up curls. If I don't need to detangle, then I'm just 
smoothing over like this because a lot of times you can remove the loose hairs and detangle just by smoothing. And then I might put my hands on the inside to clump it back together and then scrunch. So let's get into some more questions as I do the rest of my head. So someone asked, how many times should you wash your hair if you work out consistently? So that's totally up to you. I know working out with refreshing is really tough. A lot of people struggle with it. I'm actually gonna be doing a video about lots of tips and tricks for refreshing your hair after a workout, even how to protect your curls during a workout. Um, a lot of times you just have to roll with the sweat at your roots. You can try a refresh spray like that Buclem one I just showed or the Curl Smith Booster to help give your scalp sort of a little bit of a refresh, but you could also try a dry shampoo. I know it's not ideal. Again, I don't like to apply a lot of product at my roots, so I don't really use a lot of those. It's tough, but in terms of how often you should wash your hair, I would just say whenever your hair starts to look like it really needs a wash or when it starts to really dry out or your roots get very greasy, it's time to wash. Everyone's hair has a different moisture cycle, so some people's hair dries out after just two or three days. Some people can go a full week without washing their hair. So the next question is how to refresh without your scalp getting greasy and how to get root volume. So I pretty much just answered that. Um, anytime you're adding water or any type of product to your root, that's going to help reset the curls and then use your diffuser to help give you some volume at the root and I'll show you how to do that. So this part was very frizzy. So I did add some more gel to my hands and I'm just smoothing over them. The next question says, I normally brush my hair every day. Do curly hair people not brush their hair on days two and three? How do you do this? I know the pineapple silk pillowcase, but I was just wondering as most videos I see on day two and three, don't mention brushing or detangling. My hair usually is a mat by the evening. I know exactly what you're talking about because mine is too. I've always wondered like, how do people go all week without ever detangling their hair? I can't do that. It must just be our hair type if yours is the same way. Um, I think low density hair tends to get a lot more tangled. Plus if you have high porosity hair, it can get a lot more tangled. So I had way worse tangles when my hair was transitioning. I still like to detangle though. As you can see, I'm, I'm lightly detangling. So right now I'm sort of detangling, but I'm not completely detangling from the root to the tip. I'm just sort of spot detangling where I feel like it needs it. Um, and that is what I'm doing with my fingers. So as I showed. Now you probably have seen me do videos where I do a full refresh where I do completely detangle. So I can link my refresh playlist down below if you wanna see how I do that. But I totally agree with you. I still have to detangle just because I can't stand all the tangles in my hair. There are also a lot of ways to help reduce the tangles in your hair. Again, I've done a video about that, so I'll put it down below. I recommend checking that out because there's a lot of things that you might not think about that are tangling up your hair throughout your day. I know you mentioned that your hair gets tangled by evening, so I share lots of tips and tricks for reducing friction throughout the day. And a lot of times it just gets better with time as your hair gets healthier. So I feel like I'm actually doing more detangling than I normally would because I'm answering these questions, but normally I would just kind of touch up a little bit, but I wanna make sure I get through all the questions. So I'm definitely doing a little bit more than usual. So the next question is refreshing my curl pattern. Day one and two curls are great. Day three and four is typically loose waves that are frizzier and usually end up in a ponytail or bun. So this is normal. My curls get a lot looser throughout the week as I'm adding more product, they're getting more weighed down. But I like to use a brush a lot of times to redefine curls. You obviously have to do this on hair that's wet. So just pick up a curl that's looking loose, make sure it's fully wet. So I just wet my hands. And this is also how I tame frizz and get the curls to reform. So I'm just taking my Conair brush and then I kind of finger coil and that ringlet comes back. So I don't do this on all the curls. That defeats the purpose of refreshing. I feel like that takes too long. This is also how I hide my grays. I just blended those grays into a curl clump. So any curls that look like they need some help. And I only do this on the curl clumps that are looking very frizzy. And that just helps to blend the frizz into that curl clump so that way it's not sticking out. And as I mentioned, a lot of times your frizz is coming from the underside layer. So if you need to, you can lift up your hair and go underneath and make sure that you're not getting frizz at your root underneath. So I just added some more water. I don't feel like I need to add any more product. I've definitely added enough product. So I'm just gonna gently detangle with the brush and then use that brush with some tension to form those ringlets again. And this is also how you can get your clumps to come back. 
if your hair is wet enough. If it just looks stringy, then you don't have enough water in your hair. And I don't have too much water in my hair either. It's still gonna dry really fast, although it might look like it's very wet. It's still dry like at the root, other than that product I added, which absorbs pretty quickly. So especially right here, you see how this is very loose and not really a ringlet anymore. I just added some water and I'm gonna use my brush to define it. See, the ringlet came back. I more so do this by day like four and five when it's really looking bad. I don't always do this in the beginning. And you could even just do some face framing pieces. You could just do some pieces around the top of your head. So the next question is, my struggle is my hair is fine wash day and then dry the next day. I strictly use moisture products on wash day, maybe a bit of protein another day. I clarify and I squish to condition my conditioners. What am I doing wrong? So I would make sure that your products have those film forming humectant ingredients, but those are gonna help your hair from getting dehydrated. Um, also, like I mentioned, everyone's hair has a different moisture cycle. So it's normal for your hair to start to get dry by the next couple of days. And this is another thing that will improve as your porosity improves if you're transitioning, because at first, if your hair is more high porosity and damaged, then it's just releasing all that water. And so it's not staying as moisturized. So you know how I showed you those curls that were looking very loose and stretched out? I just used the brush on them and now the curl came back. So the next question is how do you refresh the back of your head and avoid a cowlick? So y'all know that I have this if you've seen my videos. I did a whole video all about how to cover your scalp in the back. So if you have low density hair, definitely check that out. But my hair always wants to separate right here. See how it likes to separate? So I basically use my hand like this to gather it together. And then I pick up the hair right here. And it's normal for your hair to separate in the back too. A lot of people have a part there. Plus this gets mashed down when you're sleeping. Even in a bonnet, I feel like this part still gets mashed against the back of my head. So I picked up that whole part that's gonna help cover where it's separating. I'm gonna use the brush horizontally to lift my hair up and away from my scalp and see how the hair is flat against the brush. That's creating that flat horizontal section to help cover the scalp. And if I don't wanna use a brush, sometimes I will just wet my hands and just make sure that those curls are separated because a lot of times the curls wanna to clump together on next day hair, so I just kinda of separate it with my hand. Now I'm gonna take a handheld mirror and look at my hair in the back, which is what I always do on wash day as well, and I can see that it's fully covered and looks good. So I just need to scrunch a little bit to get those ringlets to form back at my root right there. So the next question is, how do you refresh when you put too much product or didn't like the combo you used on wash day? So I would recommend wetting your hair down with a spray bottle and then take a towel or a t-shirt, this is my hair repair towel, and scrunch out that excess product. This is also how you can help your hair dry faster because it's absorbing any excess water. But this will soak up some product, so if you find that you use too much, this will help absorb some of that. You gotta make sure your hair is wet, of course, so that product can re be removed with your towel. If you didn't like the products you used on wash day, then I don't recommend using them to refresh. I would go with like a leave-in conditioner that you know you like, mix it with some water so it's diluted so you're not adding too much product and refresh with just that, and then you could smooth a little bit of your favorite gel over to tame frizz. So sometimes that creates a little bit of frizz because my hair is not super wet, so I am just gonna smooth a tiny, tiny bit of gel or even just some water over that frizz. I also like to take my hands with a little gel and tame the flyaways at the root. Now the hair is like webbing and sticking together right there. I'm just gonna gently separate it, add some more water, and then make sure that the curls are grouped into the right curl clumps. So we're trying to force them to go into a different curl family, then it's not gonna look right. So that looks much better. So instead of being all webbed and stuck together, now I have two ringlets. So the next question is, do you diffuse on refresh day? So yes, I do use my hair dryer and my diffuser, and that is how I get curls that are more defined and I get my curls to shrink back up and also how I prevent frizz. A lot of times I find that people's issues with refreshing are all because they're not diffusing. If I were to just let my hair air dry like this, it would literally just look like this, but be frizzier. It would be flat, it would be more stretched out, I would have little to no volume, and it would definitely be frizzy. I don't know what it is about diffusing, but it reduces my frizz so much because when I air dry, I'm moving around, the cast is getting broken up, and it takes longer for that cast to set, 
when I'm air drying. Whereas if I diffuse, I'm able to set that cast in place immediately, shrink the curls back up, and that prevents the frizz instead of letting it just air dry. That's also how I get root lip too, because as you can see, my roots are looking very flat and stretched out, but when I diffuse, you'll see the difference. So it looks like my hair is soaking wet, but it's actually not completely soaking wet. So when I go to diffuse, it usually takes like five to 10 minutes max because it's pretty dry at the root. You know, other than that product that I applied, which is already soaked in pretty much, it's not soaking wet all the way down to the inner layers of the hair like it is on wash day. So diffusing doesn't take long at all. Um, and you also need your hair to be somewhat wet for you to even be able to reset your curls. So if you do want to shrink them back up and get more definition, and if you want to get more root lift, they do need to be wet or else you can't really diffuse dry hair. You know, nothing will happen. So I like to just diffuse in the upright position or I do flip my head over to get volume, but I don't really do my plopping diffusing method that you might have seen me do on wash day. Um, usually it's not wet enough to have to do that. So I'm so I always use the low setting and also just the warm or the cool air. Sometimes I can dry my hair with the cool air when I'm just refreshing. Okay, so my hair is probably 98% dry. I don't always get it completely dry when I refresh and that's okay, I just let it finish air drying. But as long as I've set those curls into place, I'm good to go. And as you can see, I definitely have quite a bit of frizz. It probably isn't showing up on camera, but specifically in the back. And also didn't really clump very good back here, which is okay, I know it's not gonna be perfect, but as you all know, I'm a huge fan of doing touch-ups after diffusing. If you've seen it in my videos, I usually always have to do this somewhere. Um, so if you have any curls that ended up wonky or they look frizzy, I would recommend doing a little touch up with some water. You can even add a little bit of gel. If you had any ringlets that didn't dry with any hold at all, then you probably didn't add enough gel. And this is also a really great way to tame flyaways is do this after you diffuse. And then once it's completely dry, then I will fluff the roots and that will give me a lot more root lift. So now I'm pretty much good to go. All I still need to do is fluff and scrunch out some of the crunch. I'm gonna wait till it's completely dry and fully set and kind of let the heat calm down a little bit. Um, if you are struggling with having too much of a cast, if you added too much product, then you could take a little bit of an oil, add it to your hands and then use that when you are scrunching out the crunch and that will help dissolve it a lot more. But if you want your curls to last longer, then don't scrunch out too much of the crunch and skip using an oil or a serum and they will hold up a lot longer. As I mentioned, I didn't really have to refresh today. My curls definitely did look fine and I could have just added a little bit of water. But if I do that, my curls don't last much past that day. So here's how my hair looked after I finished fluffing it out. I scrunched out most of the crunch. I did leave a little bit like right here where it tends to get frizzy on me, but I think it looks so much better. You might notice it might look a little bit more flat, but it will kind of soften and fluff out throughout the day. It's just a little bit more tamed right now because I did tame the frizz, but I think that that is key though to keeping it lasting throughout the week is to tame that frizz when I see it. That way I can get that cast back and it will last a lot longer versus just letting it go. But overall, I really like how these results turned out. It was very easy. It would have only probably taken me 10 to 15 minutes if I wasn't talking through the routine. But since I was answering your questions, it took a little bit longer, but usually I can refresh my hair in under 10 to 15 minutes and that's with diffusing as well if I don't have to do like a major refresh. And then some other videos that would be helpful are the one about how to put on a bonnet and also how to preserve your curls at night. So I'll have those linked for you down below as well. So if you have any more questions about refreshing or if I didn't get to your question, be sure to leave it in the comments down below. I'll be getting back to everyone in the comments and I can also answer some of them over on my Instagram stories. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already and I'll talk to you next week. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.